We are asked to use the method of Lagrange multipliers to determine of all numbers whose sum is 50, the two that have the maximum product. We begin the method by first determining our lowercase f of xy. This is a function that I often refer to as my objective function. And the objective is associated with whatever quantity you're trying to maximize or minimize. In this case, we're trying to maximize the product of two numbers. So we could write our objective lowercase f of xy as the product of two unknown numbers. Now remember the product means that you'd be multiplying these two unknown numbers. So basically we would have x multiplied by y. Next, we need to come up with g of xy. And that's going to be associated with what I like to call a constraint. And the constraint will always be associated with the number that's given in the question. In this case, the number is 50. And we can see that our two mystery numbers have to sum to 50. This would mean, of course, that x plus y would have to equal 50. Now, to actually change this constraint into the g of xy, we have to make sure that we set this equal to 0. That's very important to take your constraint and set it equal to 0. So to do that, we would subtract 50 from both sides of the equation. This would give us x plus y minus 50 is equal to 0. So this is our constraint equation in another form. It has been set equal to zero. Once you have it set equal to zero, then the expression on the left side becomes your g of xy. So basically what we're saying is g of xy is going to equal x plus y minus 50. So far, so good. We have our f of xy and we have our g of xy. The third function we need is our capital F of xy lambda. Now we can see here in the steps that lambda is the Lagrange multiplier. And if we look very carefully to come up with capital F of xy lambda, all we have to do is take our lowercase f of xy and then add that to the Lagrange multiplier multiplied by our g of xy. So putting this all together, we could say that uppercase f of xy lambda equals our lowercase f of xy, which again was xy, plus lambda multiplied by our lowercase g of xy, which was the x plus y minus 50. And that would complete step one of this process. We can move on to step two. And we can see that we need to find the first partial derivatives. We need the partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to y and with respect to lambda. Now to do that, we may find it useful to first take our uppercase f function and distribute the lambda into the parentheses. It's not necessary to do this, but most students would find this to be a helpful maneuver. So capital F of x, y, lambda would now be x, y plus lambda x plus lambda y minus 50 lambda. Some of my lambdas are struggling today. Why don't we fix that one? Okay, now we are set to find the partial derivatives. Let's begin with the partial derivative with respect to x. So remember, when you take the partial derivative with respect to x, you have to treat x as the variable, but then the y and lambda are going to be constants. So why don't we just make a note of that underneath here that y and lambda are going to be constants for this partial derivative. So the partial derivative of xy with respect to x would simply be y. And then the partial derivative of this term with respect to x would be lambda. The derivative of this term would be 0 because both lambda and y are constants. And then same thing over here, the 50 lambda is also a constant. Now, of course, we don't need to write plus 0, minus 0, so we can take those out. So here is our capital F with respect to x. It's just y plus lambda. Now, moving on, we also need to find the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And in this case, x and lambda are going to be constant. So for the derivative with respect to y of xy, we would have x. The derivative with respect to y of this term here would be 0 because both lambda and x are 0. Oh, dear. So we can put that in there as just 0. Then the derivative of lambda y would just be lambda. 
and then the derivative of minus 50 lambda is just zero. So we can take out those zeros and we're left with just x plus lambda. And finally, we need the partial derivative with respect to lambda. This would mean, of course, that x and y are the constants. So x, y, the derivative would just go to zero because they're both constant. Lambda x, the derivative with respect to lambda would just be x. Lambda y, the derivative with respect to lambda would just be y. And then this minus 50 lambda, the derivative with respect to lambda would just be minus 50. A little hint here, your derivative of f with respect to lambda should actually just end up equaling your little g function. Now recall little g was x plus y minus 50. And that's indeed what we have is x plus y minus 50. So let's just underline the partial derivatives that we've obtained so far. We have the one with respect to x, with respect to y, and then now with respect to lambda. We can go back up to the steps and we can see that in the third step, we have to set all of these equal to zero. And then basically it turns into an algebra problem. We have to solve for x, y, and lambda. So just to clean it up a bit, why don't we come down a little bit lower on the page and rewrite our equations. So we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x and set that equal to zero. We'll do the same with all the other partial derivatives. And as noted, this becomes a bit of an algebraic task. There's probably many ways to proceed here, but why don't we solve this first equation for lambda? So we'll just subtract the y over to the other side. So we get lambda is equal to negative y. In the second equation, we'll also solve for lambda. So we'll subtract the x to the other side. So lambda would equal negative x. Now, this is equal to lambda, and this is equal to lambda. So that means these have to equal each other. So basically, we can now say that negative y minus, or excuse me, negative y is equal to a minus x. Those two would be equal to one another. Now, we can divide a minus 1 on both sides. So this just means that y will equal x. And then we can finally move over to the third equation. And we know that y is equal to x. So we can take this y right here and replace it with x. So now that third equation would be x plus x minus 50 is equal to 0, which of course is 2x minus 50 equals 0. We'll add the 50 to the other side and then divide by 2. And we can see that x is equal to 25. But remember, right here with this result, the y was also equal to x. So if x is 25, that means y is also 25. And that concludes the problem. There is no need to confirm that 25 and 25 indeed maximize the product because in this chapter, in these problems, we will always specify whether it's going to be a maximum or a minimum. And this question did specify from the beginning that it was going to be a maximum product. So we don't have to do any final testing here to ensure that this is a maximum. These two values for x and y are the answers. So your mystery numbers are both 25.